Well, for the last week, this country has been ravenous for news about Gabby Petito, a pretty 22-year-old woman who disappeared in a trip with her boyfriend and who was later found dead in Wyoming. The families of other missing persons took special notice of Petito's case, not necessarily in the details, but in the amount of attention that particular case received. And because they spoke up, the attention has now turned to the indigenous community and the alarmingly high rate their women and men go missing or are murdered. We've brought you some of their stories before, but never with the depth they deserve. And we hope tonight's coverage will be one admittedly small step toward addressing that disparity. It's been uh, approximately six months now. On March 20th, Kim Lert June Therangle went missing. Close to midnight, uh, the cell phone went dead. Stopped using her bank account, stopped smiling for Instagram, and stopped answering her family's calls. We had never heard from her again. Todd Ledger Therangle is Kim's brother. We definitely knew that something was not right. In April, he flew from Maryland to look for her. All he found were loose ends. There was no real solid lead um, on my sister or her whereabouts. According to a missing persons report written by Greenwood Village Police, Kim said she was packing up and leaving her boyfriend on March 20th. That night, she was spotted at the Bellevue Light Rail Station on East Union. But um, after police had visited the station, uh, video footage, uh, surveillance footage verified that she actually did not get on a train. Police interviewed Kim's boyfriend and asked him if he had anything to do with her disappearance. He said he did not. He also said Kim was troubled and sometimes lived in a homeless camp. Her brother said they explored that possibility as well. We went to homeless camps, we handed out flyers, we hung flyers around the city, but unfortunately nothing really panned out. Todd says Kim's case is being taken seriously, both by Greenwood Village Police and by the local media. You all have uh, continuously reached out, followed up, um, and been willing to run my sister's story. In. But seeing the coverage of Gabby Petito's case... My heart goes out to that family. The resources marshaled to find her body and her killer. He can't help but wonder what just a little more attention would have done for his sister. You know, it can be frustrating because I know that I also reached out to the Federal Bureau of Investigation myself, the, the office that's there in Denver, um, and, and really... Uh, I'll just say I didn't receive much support. Todd, a member of the Laguna Pueblo tribe, is far from the only one frustrated. Petito's body was found in Wyoming, a sparsely populated state where missing indigenous men and women number in the hundreds. A lot of times people don't realize we're still here. They don't think of us as a modern people. Monica Snowbird runs the Hasea Advocate Program in Colorado Springs. Funded by grants and pulled together by a skeleton crew, they support indigenous survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault. We do financial literacy, we do career readiness, we kayak a lot. There's not much of anything we don't do. And speak for the missing and the murdered. This is a crisis. This is intentionally happening and we need to rally around it. Behind Snowbird sits signs bearing the names and faces of Sherry Barker and Agnes Jerry Foland. Sherry was from Standing Rock. Her family's from Standing Rock. Um, I knew her when she was a little girl. Barker was killed during a robbery in 2016. She was shot in her car with her son in the backseat. Her case was solved. Foland was stabbed to death in 2002. Hers is considered cold. No open investigation going on about her case, no leads. It's considered to be unsolved, and she was a veteran. Both of these women deserve justice. Stories like theirs get attention every couple of years when a new movie comes out or a mural is unveiled. However many murals we put up, however many documentaries we put out, it's still, we aren't on the radar continually. It's or in this case, when a white woman's disappearance goes viral. It shouldn't take a white woman dying for native voices to be uplifted. And someone does a story on the overlooked. The response that that young woman and her family received nationally is the appropriate response. That's the response that should be the standard for every time someone goes missing. And it's not. Snowbird knows the attention won't last. I don't think it's even gonna last a week. Um, I think I'd be surprised if it if it went that long. But her mission will. Inside her small headquarters, there's a pantry stocked with food, clothes, and regalia for anyone who needs them, and someone to listen and to advocate when it seems no one else is. And if that means that we are constantly beating down doors to make people do better, then that's unfortunately what we're going to do.
And advocates say there are several reasons Native women go missing at such a high rate, but Abigail Echo Hawk with the Urban Indian Health Institute tells us that above all else, there is a general apathy toward these cases in the national conversation and among law enforcement. I've talked to families who tried to file missing persons reports and nobody would even take their report saying, oh, maybe she'll come back or she was probably a runaway or, you know, this is what happens. Native women come and go. This is where we see the inequity, not only in the coverage, but the way that law enforcement was investigating these cases and the way that government officials hopped onto it to find this woman. Why don't they do that for us? We don't see that happening for Native people. In 2018, Echo Hawks Group published a report that found seven cases involving missing or murdered indigenous women were not included in Denver law enforcement records. And this week, we asked Police Chief Paul Pazin about those findings. He didn't go into specifics, but he was adamant that his department cares for these families and is doing all it can. We take this serious. I, uh, th this is a personal issue that uh, particularly around uh, indigenous community members that we want to make sure that they are that being heard, uh, that we're actually out there taking these matters uh, very serious. And everyone we interviewed for this story had so many insightful things to say. And you will find more of their thoughts on this crisis, its causes, and what can be done about it on the DenverChannel.com. And if there is a missing persons case that you would like us to look into, tell us about it in an email, or you can call the number on your screen and leave us a voicemail.